and he leads off. John Bear Grease. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to WDIO's coverage of the start of the 39th running of the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. I'm Bailey Warfield. She's Alicia Tipke, and we are very glad that you are cozy and warm yes. wherever you are to watch the marathon this morning. Yeah, it's a tad chilly. As you can see, Bailey and I, we have like frost on our eyelashes, <laughs> but we are so excited to be out here with you. And we're also with meteorologist Sabrina Altman, who has a little bit of a weather update for us. I do. We are actually currently under a wind chill advisory, and this area goes until 1 p.m. today. As wind chills are about negative 30 right now, and it certainly feels like it, judging by the lack of feeling in my toes. The dogs, however, are loving the cold, Bailey and Alicia. No doubt about that. So we are, uh, we've got a team in the shoot here. First out today is Colleen Wallen. You will notice that she's wearing bib two, and that's because every year bib number one is reserved for John Bear Grayson himself. That's the first person they send down the trail is the spirit of John Bear Grace. So the first human musher that we will see Five, come out today four, is Colleen three, Wallen. Two, you can hear the countdown. One, and here she goes. The John Bear Grace Sled Dog Marathon has officially begun. Colleen's first Bear Grace Sled Dog Marathon, get this Alicia, was 28 years ago. Wow, that is more than I am. I'm 26, so she has been smushing more than I've been alive. <laughs> Which is really exciting. She is uh, a face that we see almost every year in this race. That's she exciting. finished third last year wow. in 2022. So she's always kind of in the mix in that top five. And uh, now we've got Keith Eiley coming out from Ray, Minnesota. He's with Miles Ahead Racing. And what's so fun is his wife, Erin, she's also a musher. And Bailey, they were kind of trying to decide who they wanted to pilot this team yeah. this year. Keith got it. And he won the marathon all the way back in 2006. Okay. So it's been a little while since he's won, but he ran it in 2020 and he took second place. Yes. So Absolutely. pretty impressive resume here from Keith. Absolutely. So Keith is in the shoot. You'll see yes. mushers leaving every two minutes. It moves very quickly. Yeah, here. we've got 17 this year, which is actually a little bit of a smaller field than we had last year. We had about 24. So I can see maybe why a little bit chillier, quite a bit chillier this year. Yeah, the other notable thing, and we'll talk about it uh, soon when Ryan Anderson comes out, is there's only one former champion in the field this year. Uh, last year we had five. So it was really kind of anybody's race, but from what I've heard, there's uh, a lot of people that feel like there's six or seven teams that could really win this year, so we don't know who, uh, who will be crossing that Grand Portage finish line first. All right, and we can hear the dogs. I love hearing them. The excitement. <laughs> yes. They're and ready then as to soon go. as they start running, they're quiet. Yep. They're focused. And here comes Keith. There he goes, number three, Keith Eiley. Second musher out. My niece and nephew are Morgan and Talia. And as Keith makes his way up the hill here on the road before he turns off out of the snowmobile trail where the rest of the race will take place, we have Jen Frecking in the starting shoot. Yeah, and what's so fun is her kids ran the cub run last yeah. Saturday, so it really, really runs in the family. Um, and she is married to Blake Frecking, who she came in second behind in 2019. Yeah. Uh, and she's a veterinarian, so she is a very, very 
very well versed in these animals. Yeah, and I, I know Sabrina had the chance to talk to Blake, Jen's husband, recently uh, about why he's not in the race this year. Let's check in with Sabrina. Yeah, I, I talked with him over at the Cub Run last week, and he said that basically between work and all the effort it takes to train these teams, they decided to put all that effort into one team rather than two, and hopefully give them more of a shot. And like you mentioned, their daughter Elna is competing in the 120 this year, and Blake also told me that his Siberian Huskies especially really like the super cold temperatures compared to the Alaskan Huskies of the other mushers, Bailey. Jen Frecking. Yeah, it's so exciting that, that her daughter will be racing in the in the Bear Grace 40 this year and they're really starting to bring them up the ranks and hey, maybe we'll see her in the full marathon. Maybe, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case before long. And you know, the thing about the temperatures this year, which we're gonna be talking about all the way through the finish oh, on absolutely. Tuesday. Um, these are similar to the race in 2019, a couple of years ago very similar temperature wise and uh blake and jen did very well in okay race because they run those siberian huskies who okay. really like the really cold temperatures they, they like thrive in this type of weather exactly so uh, i think jen will be one to watch this year that's exciting when he was 18 years old he's the one in the dog the one thing ever gets Jen's making her way up the road wearing bib four, heading out on the trail here, and she'll be followed by bib five, of course. And that is Nick the Now, Nick is a rookie. He has not run this race before, however, he's been around the race for a while. He's from Ely, Minnesota. He actually grew up in Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. But he moved to Ely 10 years ago. Okay. And he's been helping out uh, with Nathan Schroeder's team, Schroeder okay. Mushing. And so that's whose team he is running this year. And he's been a handler on the trail. So the handlers okay. are the people that um, wait for the teams at checkpoints. Oh, sure. As they come in. You know, they're helping take dogs' booties off, make sure they get food and water and straw to curl up on and get some rest. Um, so Nick is certainly no stranger to sled dog racing. He just hasn't been the one on the sled. Fair enough. And funny enough, he's not the only Ely, Minnesota person on our docket today. We'll talk about Peter McClellan later on. And there goes Nick. He uh, he did run this last year, but he scratched at Trail Center, oh, fair. which is what makes him a rookie. So if you don't finish the race, you're still considered a rookie, okay. even if you've started a previous year. So some of these names may be familiar, but because they scratched and didn't finish races before, they're still considered rookies. All right. Well, I love that he's back. He's back, giving another try. Yes. He also took fourth in the Gunflint Mail Run earlier this month. So oh, wow. that section of the trail up by Trail Center will will be familiar to a lot of these mushers who ran the Gunflint just a couple weeks ago. He's all warmed up. He's ready to go. One, two. We can hear some more excited dogs who are ready to get on the trail. That is Matt Schmidt. He's next up here, wearing bib number, bib number six. He uh, lives outside of Grand Marais. His uh, group is called Sawtooth Mountain Racing. Sabrina? Yeah, so I talked to Matt the other day, and he was telling me all about the dog health and safety aspect of this race. Now, we had the pre-race vet checks yesterday. There's also mandatory vet checks all throughout the race. There's a team of veterinarians that are actually all volunteer-based, and they come from all over the country. The head vet 
came in yesterday. I spoke to Katie and she was telling me about how a little bit of the precautions they take. They make sure that these dogs aren't having any torn ligaments. They're inspecting each and every dog very closely multiple times throughout the race. And as you can see, a lot of them are wearing booties. That is because of the friction of this cold snow as they're running across it, Bailey. <laughs> He has got an excited team heading out here on the Bear Grease Trail, that's for sure. Matt owns 40 dogs with his wife, Erin Ultimus. Erin may be a familiar name to people who follow this race because she has also run it. She finished fifth last year in the Bear Grease nice. Sled Dog Marathon, but she's not running this year. Just Matt. Matt also just won the 12 dog gun flint mail run race, and Aaron won the 8 dog gun flint mail run mail run race this year. So uh, very decorated. Definitely a, a successful start to the racing season for them. It's and always nice Matt to see that. Is, yeah, now Matt's out on the Bear Grease Trail. <laughs> Yeah, this, this race is so fun. I got to talk to a couple descendants of John Bear Grease him, himself um, earlier this week. A great great grandson and a great grandson, and then his great 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 grandson is three and a half years old. Oh rode a sled across the wow. finish line in the Cub Run. So it's exciting to see all of these fans here and all these mushers getting involved to honor John Bear Grease's memory yeah. and all the work that he did to help develop the North Shore with his mail running in from 1877 to 1899. Right. Now about it. Excuse me. And in just a few seconds, the defending champion will take off. This is Ryan Anderson. He's won the Bear Grease four times. Looking for his fifth win starting today. We'll find out Tuesday uh, afternoon or evening. And that'll cross the finish line. That would be a record. Five wins. It would be a record five wins. Right now it's a three-way tie for the most between Ryan, who just left, uh, Jamie Nelson, and Nathan Schroeder. So Ryan has 32 dogs and two kids. Woo! That's a lot of work. That is a lot he of works work. as a carpenter in the summer, but then he focuses mostly on the dogs in the winter. So he, his wins came in 2011, 2015, 2017, wow. 2022. So he knows this course very well. He certainly does. Plus, he, he took a year off of the full 300-mile marathon and raced the Bear Grease 120, oh, okay. the finish of which you're going to be covering yes. tomorrow morning. And he won the Bear Grease 120 in 2019. So, so he has championships in multiple races. So potentially our 120 winner tomorrow could be a future marathon champion. Certainly could. All right, next up in the shoot is Errol Wallen. His mom, Colleen, was the first one to start to kick off the marathon. So Errol is in college at St. Cloud State University. He plays baseball for St. Cloud. Alicia, I know you covered some of his high school sports career. Oh yeah, and two harbors. He played baseball, which is quite a bit warmer than this. An yeah. interesting combo, baseball and sled dog mushing. But it's fun to see him right. both finding success and loving both sports. Well, and he likes that he attends St. Cloud State and their mascot is a husky. That's perfect. It's only appropriate. So Arrow came in fourth last year in 2022. He came in sixth in 2021. So, you know, if this is a pattern, if he's moving up two spots every year, Arrow could be crossing second. Perfect. <laughs> Just saying, I'm seeing Just a saying. pattern. I, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. He says that he's been around sled dogs, of course, since he was tiny, because mom, Colleen, and, Colleen and dad, Ward, both mush. Um, he says that Colleen used to carry him around in a backpack, and she did chores with the dogs. Now, if I remember correctly, did they finish back to back with each other last year? Yeah. Right? Yes. Colleen finished just minutes before Arrow, so it was a really sweet moment That's at the finish line. You were there for it. I was. She just waited there with her team and got to see 
see her son finish just a couple minutes behind her. She actually so said funny. it was one of the best and worst moments of her racing career oh. was passing Arrow oh, no. on her way to the last checkpoint. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm sure she was going, yes, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. But also, like, oh, she wants him to succeed. <laughs> yeah. But hey, both top ten finishes. Amazing. What can you ask for? Yeah. Good for them. And Silver Creek Sled Dogs is their kennel. They're uh, just up by two members. As Arrow makes his way onto the trail, we have him number nine up here next. This is Laura Meese. She is from McMillian, Michigan. Her kennel's called Nature's Kennel. And uh, she says that she fell in love with the sport of mushing at nine years old when her family studied the Iditarod as a homeschool project. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I know she's a good friends with the Freckings. She graduated high school at age 16. That's impressive. Smarty pants. And she's returning to the Bear Grease. She finished 11th back in 2020. And uh, she was here last year, but she actually scratched at Trail Center, which is about halfway into the race. Okay. So uh, she is familiar with this. So another one that we've got coming back after scratching. Yeah. Try it again. And an Iditarod musher. She finished the Iditarod in 2020. So she certainly has plenty of experience. She actually runs summer sled dog tours too in the UP of Michigan. That just started last summer. So she's a year round musher. And that's how you keep it up, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've got another familiar face that's getting ready in the shoot here. This will be bib number 11. This is Sarah. So this is Mary Manning. She is from Hovland, Minnesota. She lives off the grid up there, and she runs Doodle Dog Kennel. They've got 16 racing dogs and several retired sled dogs there. She's also uh, started the Bear Grace a few times, has yet to finish it, which is why she has the rookie designation by her name. She scratched uh, about 115 miles into the race last year, and then she scratched at the very last checkpoint before the finish in 2021. So she's gotten really close. So Bailey, tell us a couple reasons why these mushers are scratching at this point. Well, last year conditions were very different than this. They were a lot warmer. And warmer conditions are actually harder on the dogs. When that snow is really soft and punchy out there, it can be hard on their wrists. Excuse me. Um, and it's just added challenging to me that was healthy actually looking at the other conditions. Now it will be interesting to see how things go this year. Polar conditions, obviously, that's a lot harder on the humans. Absolutely. Okay. This race going. It will be interesting to see. Mary works as a conservation officer for the Minnesota DNR. And she's been running dogs for 25 years. So she loves the outdoors. This is a perfect fit for her. Absolutely. No doubt about it. All right, we've got nine mushers on the trail. And a few more to go. Yeah, now we're gearing up to see Bib number 11, Sarah Kiefer. She runs with Reddington Mushing, who is a yep. name we know very well. Uh, ran the second team of Ryan Reddington's dogs last year and is running the A-team this time around. She gets the A-team. The A-team. That's because Ryan Reddington himself is not running. You can see him in that lime green jacket. He's actually going to be handling for Sarah this year. So he'll be able to help with the dogs, probably do a little bit of coaching on the trail, but she gets to run the team. And I know that you chatted with them a little bit about one of their dogs that 
are back in the running. Yes, so Wildfire is uh, one of their dogs that you'll see probably toward the back of their team, close to the sled. He's uh, a dark, like a black colored dog with a little bit of caramel coloring on him too, but he was hit by a snowmobile when they were training last January, just a couple weeks before the Bear Grease. They weren't sure he would ever run again. His leg was broken in three places, but as we count down, he's getting ready to start the Bear Grease. I would love to see that. Amazing, amazing recovery. And there goes Sarah Kiefer and her team, which includes Wildfire. Awesome. And let's uh, check in with Sabrina down the trail farther here. Yeah, so oh, what a heart. Oh, like, really makes you cheer up to learn about wildfire. Um, I just wanted to talk real quick about the snowpack. Now, these mushers, they need about six to eight inches of snow depth as they're putting down their snow hook. And although we do have a lot of mushers from up the North Shore where we've had plenty of snowpack, in Wisconsin, it's been a little bit of a challenge. I caught up with a Bear Grease 40 musher, Mo Melissa Mendelson, last week, who was telling me about how they have this issue with there's a little bit of rain mix in and then it got warmer and it makes it really slushy and hard to not only step through but also to room the trails when you're in a little bit more of a remote area and so thankfully up here we have more than enough snowpack i know the snowpack in duluth is at about 22 inches snow depth and it's even more as you make your way up the north shore with the snowiest december on record and definitely plenty of snow for us to work with and trails are all good so trail conditions are good temperatures are good for the dogs difficult for the humans and so this overall should be a really clean ideal weather condition type of race bailey yeah, it's nice to have so much snow this year. I know it's been hard on those of us who have to do a lot of shoveling, but, you know, a couple of years ago, they couldn't start this race where we are starting it now by Billy's Bar. They actually had to start up on the snowmobile trail because there was so little snow. I remember that. They had to change the course simply because we didn't have enough to make a trail. Exactly, exactly. Just had to start a little further down there so definitely not a problem this year not a problem this year so we are about to see bit number 12 take off this is Catherine langley she is from glenwood new brunswick canada so one of our canadian mushers today she runs a hot kennel she did start the race last year but she's still considered a rookie as we've been talking about because she scratched at trail center so here she goes for another try at john bear Grease. She and her partner have 35 dogs and one daughter. <laughs> and she met her partner at a tourism kennel. Oh, they were both working. Similar interests. Makes sense. I think you need someone who has similar interests when you're going to have a kennel with 35 dogs. Today. Yeah, and one kid. And one kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, one of our other Reddington racing teams gearing up to come out under bib number 13. We've got Daniel Klein. He's from Eagle, Wisconsin. And interestingly enough, he's been in a couple marathons before, yeah. Bailey, but not the Bear Grease Marathon. He's raced in the Boston Marathon. Oh my god. He gosh. has run the Wisconsin Ironman. Yep. He has competed in the American Berkebiner. Oh my gosh. And decided that at 63 years old, he's got a dream of racing in the Iditarod in 2024. No way. So now he's here, very cup, yeah. to lead the shoot at the Bear Grease. Oh my goodness, and the Bear Grease is an Iditarod qualifier. So we, we will have a lot of people who travel to do this race because you have to have so many qualifying races before you can do the Iditarod, you know, to, to prove to them that you can do some of these long distance, somewhat grueling sled dog races before they let you just take off to go 900 miles in Alaska. He is ready to go, right? Uh, Reddington mushing team, like you said. So that's two Reddington mushing teams, but no Reddington but no, on the sled. But no Ryan Reddington on a sled. Kristen McCartney from Bennett, Minnesota, with pick number 14, representing the Owen Dogs Kennel. 
We've got another uh, veterinarian musher, uh, Kristen McCarty. She's gearing up to leave here. Number 14. She's from Babbitt, Minnesota. So kind okay. of local here from Holly Dogs. Some iron range Hello. representation. Yep, absolutely. And here's a fun one. She said she's got 21 dogs with her husband, Sean. Quote, and five couch dog potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so 21 working dogs, five couch, five five couch, couch dog potatoes. potatoes. I'm jealous of the couch potatoes right now. Yeah, I'm sure they're enjoying their couch. <laughs> no doubt about it. And she also, you had mentioned someone who does tours. Yeah. She does something similar. They freight anglers under Holly Dogs, their company, to the PWC for ice fishing or winter camping expeditions. Oh my gosh. Need a little help hauling some gear in? Yep. Who better I to do it? Should have called her to help us haul in our camping. Yeah, our, <laughs> our camera, our camera here. here. Yeah, feels like we're camping here. <laughs> While the team clean the two minute interval, we are at number fourteen of a field of seventeen. A cool thing incredible. about the bear race too Ushers is that every usher who runs is sworn in as a mail carrier. Eight. As a U.S. postal carrier, and that harkens back to John Bairdrace's role carrying mail along the North Shore. So each of these teams that heads out has that sled with the bag on the front, and in that bag is at least a few pieces of trail mail that they'll carry with them all the way till the finish. And then that mail is eventually taken with, I think, a more traditional route to get to its final destination. But it's kind of a cool thing. You can send somebody a piece of mail that goes along the whole bear trip. And it's something, you know, we don't necessarily think about when it comes to, you know, getting mail out in the 1870s, 80s, 90s. They didn't have a railroad coming up that direction. They didn't even have a road yet. Right. So John Bear Grease, his sled dog team was the only way these people were getting mail. Mm -hmm. And a lot of news traveled that way too. So we've got our, our second Ely musher gearing up here, Peter McClellan. He's with White Wilderness Kennel. Now he first ran a team in 1989. Wow. That was on a winter camping trip that he did. And he just fell in love since then. In 1995, he started a touring business, another one, White Wilderness Sled Dog Adventures. And through that, people can mush their own teams. Okay. So that's a pretty unique offer that he has there. Absolutely. He scratched in 2021. He was eighth in 2020, and now he's back. Now he's back to... Give her another try. So this race is run primarily on snowmobile trails that go up the North Shore. Um, and so there's signs along the race, warning snowmobilers, hey, keep an eye out for sled dog teams. But sled dog teams, they do a lot of their training on snowmobile tours anyway. So the dogs really don't bat an eye when they see a snowmobile coming down the trail. It's something that, uh, that they're familiar with. It's time to unlock the water for another our Canadian competitor wearing bib number 16 from the Lone, Ontario. Andy Heachap is at the line, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Andy, and welcome. He runs for the Falls and Patrol Racing is the name of the kennel. Well, let's check in with Sabrina again. Sabrina, now that you're watching more and more mushrooms, we only have three left running past you. Just what kind of are you seeing from your end down there? I'm seeing definitely a lot of really excited dogs. I mean, you're talking about pussies that have been bred for generations for this purpose as working dogs. Just like we have hunting dogs that are, you know, bred to hunt, these dogs are born to run and they're so happy running through and I just want to pet each and every one of them but I have to keep my distance and you know that respectful distance of the mushing and they, these dogs will run all the way up to their various checkpoints and then once again the checkpoints they get their little straw beds they get fed they get all cozy until the next leg and so definitely happy dogs running through and they're enjoying the temperatures much more than I am I'll say that for sure Alicia. Fair enough, fair enough. 
Well, we've got another rookie on our hands here, gearing up to leave. Also, another one of our Canadian friends. And your shaft is from Lulu, Ontario. I love the name of his kennel, Paws on Patrol Racing Kennel. I just think that's genius. He shares the passion with his wife and two kids. And it was his wife, Rhonda, who actually got him hooked in 2004. And then it just stuck because then they got their own dogs by 2006. Okay. And for him, he said that he chose the Bear Grylls partially because of the challenge of the race, but also because of the location coming in just down from Ontario. One of the things you might notice as you see these teams go by is that they're standing on their sleds, and sometimes they're pressing one of their feet down kind of in the center of that sled. That's actually the brake on the sled. So sometimes these dogs really want to go faster than the musher wants them to go you know they want them they want the dogs to conserve some energy and these dogs can really just get themselves going so there is actually a break on the sled where if they stand on that it gives a little more drag to it and can slow that team down and so at the start like this when the dogs are fresh they have a lot of energy there's all these people around all this excitement they can really uh, get themselves going too fast so a lot of these mushers are probably stepping on the brake as they start the race all right, just a couple mushers left to go. Doesn't this fly? Two to go. It flies by. So we have Jesse Terry getting ready to start now. Jesse is an Anishinaabe man. He's a member of the Laksul First Nation. He's from Sioux Lookout, Ontario, Canada. And he runs on the land kennel. He got into dogs at 11 years old, and he did start this race last year. So maybe his name sounds familiar to you if you were around the race or tracking it at all last year. But he's still got that rookie designation because he scratched at the trail center checkpoint. The trail center checkpoint is about halfway into the race. There were a lot of mushers who scratched at that checkpoint last year. So Jesse's off to give it another try. Big smile, a wave to the crowd. Got the shades on because it's going to be a uh, sunny race, that's for sure. Sabrina, what's going on where you're at? Yeah, well, we have them running up this hill. I just wanted to add, you mentioned the, uh, talking about stepping on the brake, and this is actually a little bit of a workout for the musher and the dog, because not only do they have to make sure that they're braking and really digging that into the snow, but they also, sometimes with the dogs having a little bit of issue going up a hill, they kind of hop off their sled, run up the, with the dog, and I had the opportunity of going on a sled last year, somebody that was racing in the Bear Grease 40, uh, who's not racing in this year, but you can just see how much work they actually put into it. It's like a little bit of, it's a lot of exercise for the musher and the dogs alike, and they're all kind of working together to get through this as a team. And then they really, they go pretty much for most of the year. It's just the summer months from around May to September. Uh, Matthew Schmidt was telling me that they take a little bit of a break and just have the dogs roll around and play. But the rest of the time they're training, whether it's on trails an ATV or once there's snow on the ground with the snow running through and the dogs definitely get plenty of their well-beloved running in with that training as they really seem to enjoy it Bailey no doubt well we are already on our last full marathon musher 17th and final yes this is Mark Massacotti from Quebec, Canada. No, he did sprint races as a teenager. And for his part, it's a whole St. Bernard. <laughs> and here he is, our final one. <laughs> He's got some vocal dogs as they yes. take off down the now, trail. He has quite a decorated experience. He won the 10th Can-Am crown, placed 21st in the Iditarod, 4th in the 2020 Bear Grease, so we could expect some good things out of him this year.
I've seen him on the trail before. He always seems to have a, a smile on his face. You can tell he really enjoys doing this. So, you know, it'll be a matter of time until we know who wins and also how many matches will finish this race. Last year, 24 teams started. Only 10 actually finished the race. So, we uh, definitely remain to be seen how many uh, will last through the end of the race, but there will be teams of veterinarians all along the race at every checkpoint. Teams are required to get at least 24 hours of rest over the course of this race. It okay. starts this morning, and then uh, is it going to wrap up Tuesday afternoon or evening? So they have to get quite a bit of rest. Two checkpoints are required to get at least four hours of rest at each point. So at least four hours of rest, so they'll be well rested. And like you said, hopefully these cold temperatures will actually help a lot of these mushers complete the race. So we can maybe go 17 for 17 this year. And I know you'll be live at the finish line of the marathon. That'll be on Tuesday. And I'll be live tomorrow morning during Good Morning Northland. We'll bring you the winners of the 120 Fair Grace, Fair Grace 120 race. So they're expected to finish potentially around 6 a.m. tomorrow, uh, just somewhere around the 6, maybe 7 a.m. hour. So and those 120 mushers will be the next ones to take off. Shoot here. Yeah, it'll be an exciting one for sure. Cold, but exciting. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we've had a good time. We hope you've had a good time being cozy and warm and yet yes. still being able to take in the sights and sounds of the bear.